and our properties we separate into two categories physical and chemical properties physical properties are properties that can be characterized without changing the composition of the compound so we can get the appearance the color uh, melting point we can melt it boiling point we can boil it we can measure densities specific heat heat conductivity electrical conductivity solubility we can observe the physical state uh, we can say whether it's crystal crystalline or not all without ever without ever changing the composition of the compound chemical properties are a measure of uh, chemical reactivity how it changes from one compound to another compound so reactivity with with air reactivity with water well if it reacts with air it becomes something else so potassium reacts with air when the process of reacting with air it becomes potassium oxide it becomes something else uh, whether it combusts whether it's inert non-reactive whether it decomposes when we heat it these are chemical properties because we're talking about whether it turns into something else or not and same with properties we can talk about the uh, changes how things change whether they are physical or chemical so melting freezing boiling crystal crystallizing evaporation vaporization do not change compounds so those are physical changes chemical changes uh, whether we burn it decompose it um, uh, electrolyze it uh, electroplate it uh, these are things that will change it from one form into another form from one compound into another compound so that would be a chemical change we can uh, separate things by physical methods or chemical methods also so physical methods we're not changing any of the compounds present we could separate the compounds without changing the compounds um, so if we have a mixture of two liquids together we might separate them by distilling them allowing the more volatile component to come off first uh, if we have a uh, we might be able to separate them by freezing them allowing one component to freeze and then pouring the unfrozen other component off we can separate a solid from a liquid by evaporation so salt water can be turned into salt solid salt and liquid water by evaporation um, if we're uh, if we can we can separate things just by picking them apart picking a clear picking at the white rock from red rock white sand from red sand uh, we can filter things we can take a mixture of solids and liquids and run them through a filter the filter will capture the solids and let the liquids come through we can separate things uh, using a centrifuge but none of these processes will turn one compound into another compound uh, we can also separate things through chemical reactions um, and so we can turn one compound to another compound uh, with a chemical reaction allowing us to separate it from other things in the mixture so chemical method separation would include various um, uh, chemical reactions to uh, help us with the separation when we look at matter around us it's going to be um, uh, one of a couple different things the most common type of thing is going to be a mixture a mixture has a couple different things in it, a couple different compounds in it, a couple different elements in it um, so salt water the ocean uh, we can easily evaporate off water and leave salt behind so the ocean salt water is a mixture and we can separate that using physical methods so mixtures um, uh, can be separated using physical methods and we end up with two more pure substances two more substances uh, once we do all that process get these pure substances a pure substance has a definite composition 
and constant properties. So since the composition is definite, the uh, properties are definite, we have something there. Something um, real and substantial, but it can be one of two things. Uh, the more common thing would be would be a compound. There are millions and millions of types of compounds out there. Um, the compounds have definite composition, constant properties, but we can separate them using um, chemical means, various chemical means. So after we have separated our uh, ocean water into salt and water, both of those we can separate further. Uh, we can run electricity through the water and turn it into two other pure substances. Uh, we can do a similar thing with the salt and end up with two other pure substances. Um, for this next round though, if we can't break it down, then what we have are elements. They still have definite composition, constant properties, but if we can't break it down, we have broken it down to elements. So when we break down water, we can break water down to hydrogen and oxygen. There's nothing that we have found that can break down water and oxygen and still leave a chemical behind. Um, we can break it down using um, nuclear means, but um, we have destroyed the element in the process. Table salt, we can break table salt down, we'll end up with uh, sodium and chlorine. Uh, but we can't break the sodium and chlorine down any further, so those are also pure elements. So if it's um, constant properties with definite composition, we have a pure substance. If we can break it down, it's a compound. If we can't break it down, it's an element. The other aspect of the universe is energy. There's matter and energy in the universe. We are interested in energy also as chemists. We're looking at the interaction of matter with itself to create uh, different forms of matter. But we're also looking at the interaction of energy with that matter. Energy will help uh, change matter from one form to another, or the process of changing matter will release or absorb energy. Energy is the ability to do work. This energy we divide into two categories, potential and kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. Uh, this is both macroscopic and microscopic motion. So macroscopic motion, uh, cars moving down the freeway. Microscopic motion is um, molecules moving, uh, molecules vibrating, and uh, we measure some of the microscope energy in terms of temperature. Potential energy is the available energy due to position or composition of an object. Position would be height in a gravity well. So we live in a gravity well, the planet Earth. So height uh, creates potential energy. Water at height uh, has potential energy, which then c can be converted into kinetic as it flows downhill. So the energy is always conserved. This is the first law of thermo thermodynamics, the law of conservation of energy. Energy is always conserved. There's no ability to create or destroy energy. We can convert energy w from one form to another form. And that is the whole fun of energy is in the conversion between forms. So water that is high in a gravity, high in elevation, high in a gravity well, can start to flow as it's allowed to go downhill. That turns the potential energy of height into kinetic energy of flow. And then we can run that water through a turbine, turn it into mechanical energy, 
which drives a generator turning it into electrical energy so we can turn energy from one form to another form. The natural flow of energy is from high to low. Uh, this universe likes to be at low energy so the matter in this universe is trying to be at low energy. And one of the f types of forces that we like to look at is electrostatic forces because these are forces that uh, define a lot of the chemical properties. So electrostatic forces is the attractive forces of opposite charges. So uh, electric forces are either positive or negative, negatively charged. Opposite charges attract e each other and like charges repel each other.